All right, there's another class. The other class is the class NP. And if I tell you what the word is, the word N stands for non-deterministic. So this is the class of non-deterministic polynomial time verifiable algorithms if you write the whole thing out. People just say NP. It's the class of all yes, no questions for which there's a certificate for a yes answer. Not, not for either answer, not for the answer, but a certificate for the yes answer, whose correctness can be verified using an algorithm whose running time is polynomial in the input size. So now you don't care about how you got the answer. You only care about checking the answer. Any question that's in P is in NP. If you can get the answer, regardless of the answer, in polynomial time, then you have certainly satisfied the requirement to be in class NP. All right, let's take some illustrations of problems that seem to be a little harder, but they're still clearly in NP. Given a list of n numbers, is there a fair division? Does everybody remember what is meant by a fair division of a set of numbers? You divvy them up into two stacks, and the sum of these is equal to the sum of these. I don't care how many numbers are over here and how many numbers are here. I just care that the sums are equal. Okay. Now, is there a certificate for a yes answer? Yes, because all you do is simply say, put these numbers in set A, put these numbers in set B. Check it out. So what does the referee have to check? Is every number in your list in either A or B, but not both? Easy. Easy to check. And do they add up to the same total? Easy to check. So the correctness of a yes answer can be verified very quickly. So fair division of a given set of numbers is in NP. And you see, it has to depend, the difficulty has to depend on the input size. If N is the number of bits on a DVD, then you're not going to do this problem. You're not going to check it. So it's, it's, is the ver can you verify the correctness of the certificate in a running time that's polynomial in the input size? And the answer is yes. All right, problem number two. Given a graph on, in vertices, is there a clique whose size is at least n over 2? And if you say yes, then you say which of the vertices form a clique whose size is at least n over 2. The referee says, OK, you said vertex 17, 23, 96. OK, let me just see, did you get at least n over 2 numbers, where n is the number of vertices? That's easy enough to check. And now the referee goes through the data file and sees that each pair is joined by an edge. Yes or no? I mean, if you, if you tried to fool the referee, the, the referee would say, oh, you, know, you, you, you said 17 and 23 are in this list, but there's no edge 17, 23. Bad, 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 bad. OK. Is it clear what we're saying here? That you can check this. It can be checked quickly. Notice that in both of these, no one is asking you to explain how you, died, how you got the yes answer. That could be a small miracle. It could be that you're just incredibly lucky. You could have bought it, stole it. No, you wouldn't steal. But it doesn't matter how you got the answer. It's simply the correctness of it can be checked. And then the third question in, in this list is, does it have a Hamiltonian cycle? If you say yes, you provide the permutation that can be checked. Okay, you had a question? So, why is it that we don't care about how many bytes are in the list? 
that's a good philosophical question. And we could talk about it for about an hour, maybe two hours. So the question was, why is it that we don't care? It's, it's, I'm stretching the language. We, we, we do care how we can do things. But in the definition of the class NP, all the stress is on verifying the correctness of a yes answer and does not depend on where the answer came from. Question. That question is, is the reason why they, why they might hire you is so that way you can calculate it. So if you tell someone how you did it, then they don't need, you, need to pay you anymore. I don't know whether everybody heard this answer, but it's, it's really dead spot on. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, she said, I'm going to rephrase what you said that sometimes it might be to your advantage to have capability that you don't really explain to somebody. You just demonstrate your power. And suppose you, suppose you have this algorithm for finding Hamiltonian cycles. And somebody gives you a thousand vertex graph, and you say, yes, it's got one, and you spit it out. And they say, oh, you're just lucky. Right. Then you just say, give me another one. And they give you another one, and another one, and another one. OK, then they, they, they give it to you on the computer. So the computer just gives you graph after graph after graph. And brr, brr, you find all these guys. And they say, tell me how you did it. You say, oh, no. Oh, no. This little baby over here is worth a lot of money. And I, you can't touch it. So sometimes having power. It's very important. I mean, when, as many of you know, I have not always been in academics. I took a three-year break and headed up a research group in telecommunications. I was part of the Bell system. At, I was at Bellcore. And I had some incredibly smart people working with me. And once we told one of our owners, one of the CEOs of one of the seven regional phone companies, oh, we have data integrity tools, this some years ago. These tools exist widely now, but they didn't then. We have data integrity tools, which will enable you to be 100% certain if anybody messes with your data. CEO is, wow, that's great. Oh, and then we said to the CEO, oh, by the way, this also means you can't mess with your data because you will leave footprints behind. CEO was not happy. He, he wanted to be able to mess with his data. He just didn't want anybody else to. And when we told him that uh, you will leave tracks, and now auditors, the, federal, the feds, the banks, your creditors, if you are messing with your own data, they will know. He was not happy. I haven't, maybe that's part. That's a small part of the reason why the great telecommunication research miracles of Bell Labs, AT and T Research, Bellcourt, they don't exist anymore. Uh, there, are Nobel Prize winners by the buckets were. Uh, they left. They didn't, they weren't shown the door. They just left. Uh, that's a subject for another day.